hey, hey. Welcome to our inaugural episode of ISB In Depth, your local Sevier County Public Library System podcast. Here we dive deep into the world of books, community events, and local issues. Now today, me and Sam are going to be talking about our upcoming events and programs, popular books and movies, Poetry Month, and Money Smart Week. My name's Lana. I'm a part-time library assistant here at KFL, and I really enjoyed reading classics and YA fiction. My name is Sam. I'm the new full-time circulation librarian, and I read YA, sci-fi, fantasy, and manga. You'll probably find me down at the front desk most days. <laughs> so before we jump into all the really great juicy stuff, what we really wanted to let you guys know was some of our upcoming closings for the month of April and also some upcoming events. So we have two different staff training days, um, all three branches on Wednesday, April 13th, and Tuesday, April 19th, will be closed for system-wide staff training. And I know you guys might be disappointed we're not open, but I'm kind of excited to learn <laughs> stuff to help, you know, be a better librarian since I'm very new at this. So, mm -hmm. you know, have patience with us. <laughs> uh, we'll also be closed Easter because, you know, it's a holiday. So all three branches will be closed April 15th, which is Good Friday, and then uh, April 16th, which is Saturday. And that's just, you know, we're closed Sunday. So mm -hmm. see us Monday. <laughs> So uh, during the entire month of April, if for some reason you've racked up some kind of fine, which it all happens, it happens to very many librarians who work here and come here every day, still get fines. <laughs> um, during the whole entire month of April, we're going to have this fine wave drive for the Senior Citizens Christmas, which I don't know why we call it Christmas. I don't know if they're going to give it to them at Christmas time. It's we're, We've been debating about it for weeks trying to figure out why. Anyway, if you bring in two full-size toiletry or hygiene items or two new washcloths or one full-size bath towel, you'll have all of your fines forgiven, though that doesn't include charge-offs. So if you've lost a book and we've had to charge you for that book, you have to pay for that book. I am sorry. That is just how it works. <laughs> but uh, KFL, let's just us, King Family Library, we're having a friend's market. It's Books, Baked Goods, and Treasures. It's going to be April 23rd to 7 to 3. So it used to be a part of the 10-mile yard sale. And just as a little PSA, I don't think the 10-mile yard sale is happening this year. We can't find any information on it. So if you've Googled 10-mile yard sale, you might have seen this advertisement already as formerly part of the 10-mile yard sale. Anyway, um, so you can register up to the 22nd. It's $20 for a parking spot, and that's where you set up all your stuff. Unfortunately, that $20 is non-refundable, so if the weather's bad, sorry. But it goes to the library, so really, you're winning out anyway if you use our services. <laughs> but, yes, yeah, $20 for a parking spot. You can have multiple parking spots. Um, anywhere from the night before on the 22nd from midnight to 7 a.m. the next morning, you can put your stuff out there. Um, we recommend by 7 o'clock you kind of clear it out because people are going to want to start, you know, clear out your cars so people can start doing their shopping and making you back your money. So, um uh, another final note, um, our History Center is looking for patrons and community members to share their stories about the 1993 blizzard. Um, they are also accepting photo submissions. So um, if you're, you know, like us and, you know, lived during that, you can go <laughs> bring in your Kodak cameras and your uh, camcorders and hopefully give us some nice, you know, nice local history. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always get preserved. So we always try to make these steps to have it at the local level, to hear our own voices back at us years later, because who's going to record it if we don't think to? Yeah. Um, and that's going to be taking place during a future event, May 7th, for Heritage Day, and we'll have more on that on our next podcast. But yeah. yeah, and we have so many different events coming up in April, late April, early May, all the way through summer reading in the summer. So please, please come and visit our three branches and come check us out. So, um, and if you're also stepping into the library, we do have pamphlets you can come pick up and they have all of our events from all three libraries from April to June. Mm -hmm. They'll be at front desks and if we run out, we'll print more up until about close to June and then we'll put out mm -hmm. the next month's one. So, <laughs> yeah, if you want to get spoilers instead of listening to our great podcast, <laughs> I guess you can pick up a, pick up a paper. So um, we thought as a little icebreaker, and we might do this for other ones, um, we're librarians, so what are we reading, though we don't get to read at work? 
Someone lied to me when I was growing up. Anyway, um, what I am currently reading right now is Laura by Alexandra Bracken. It came out in 2021. It's like a Greek mythology girl power kind of thing, and I really like it. And the fans of Percy Jackson, I think, are really liking it. Um, and then I'm also listening to Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. And that one's really neat because it's got like a full cast with different people doing different voices. And then while they do that chapter, they'll do voices of the other characters. So you have this like man be like, oh, yeah. And then you have him like switch to a falsetto and be like, I'm Ari. And it just it's really it's a fun <laughs> time. And the whole and the story is a fun time. And if you like Star Trek and Lord of the Rings, you're, you'll kind of like this book. I don't know how they manage to mix these things but they do. So Lana, I know you're a college student. So as a former college student, I know you (laughs) don't get time to read. So what would you want to be reading? Well, I am currently finding little bits and pieces of time within my crazy, crazy schedule to reread the Harry Potter series. So I just started over from book one, Sorcerer's Stone. And then, of course, I'm stuck reading my history textbook, which is far less fun. I was a history major, so that's <laughs> shots fired. I liked my history textbooks. But um, Harry Potter, I recently re- reread that a few years back because I had mm-hmm. never read the last one because I knew it was going to break my heart. <laughs> so I did. I like as I'm sitting at my older job and it's we've got free time. I'm sitting there reading my book, and it's amazing how easy and well easy enough one through three are, and then mm-hmm. after that, like the books start picking up in like complexity and length and and plot and you don't get to see that with many book series because harry potter started out as a children's book but by the end you could argue it's young adult yeah it gets very very dark i mean Mm. obviously i've read the movies or read i've seen the movies a lot more than i've read the books but it is kind of odd that it just keeps getting darker and darker but Mm. i guess it also reflects them growing up yeah and changing also but Another thing that leads us into talking about our main topic, and that is what has been most popular and most circulated between the months of November through February. So a lot of those books and movies are currently checked out because they are so popular, but the most circulated book was The Wish by Nicholas Sparks, and I'm just going to read a super short excerpt kind of back of the cover um, situation so you guys can kind of get an idea of what it's about. So in 1996, the year that changes everything for Maggie Dawes, sent away at 16 to live with an aunt she barely knows in a remote village on North Carolina's Outer Banks, she can think only of the friends and family she left behind until her aunt introduces her to Bryce Trickett, one of the few teenagers on the island. Handsome, genuine, and newly admitted to West Point Academy, Bryce gradually shows her how much there is to love about the windswept beach town and introduces her to photography, a passion that she will define the rest of her life with, as will Bryce. Have you ever read any Nicholas Sparks books? I have not, but I cry every time I watch The Notebook. I cried reading The Notebook, which was really (laughs) awkward when I was in... um, Oh, where was I? I was like in high school math class and I, I don't think I was supposed to be doing math, but I was reading instead. <laughs> and I just remember just openly crying <laughs> and I've never watched the movie. <laughs> See, I was crying in my high school math class, but it was because I was just being tortured by my professor. <laughs> I mean, everybody cries in math class. And if you don't, you are a liar. Yes. I remember learning <laughs> fractions. Oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> Let me get back to our popular books. So we've got A Two-Sister Detective Agency by James Patterson, which is a fiction mystery thriller. We've got The Burning by Jonathan Kellerman, which is a a fiction mystery thriller. Is there going to be a theme here? I think Uh, so. (laughs) Gated Prey by Lee Goldberg, which is, you guessed it, a (laughs) fiction mystery thriller. (laughs) So uh, what do you think our most popular genre is for at least adults? Oh, gosh. I think I'd have to just out of whim guess mystery thriller <laughs> oh you're, you're so close you've got the fiction oh so so <laughs> close <laughs> but uh i yeah it's interesting that a lot of our uh, our readers really enjoy that stuff and one of the big names is james patterson mm-hmm. what doesn't that man and his ghostwriters do what genres <laughs> do they not enter he's an adult he's in ya i think he's maybe got some kid books out for all i know <laughs> but um just a little tiny plug-in so we do have the new copies of Run, Lola, not Run, Lola, Run. That's a German film. <laughs> Run, Rose, Run, which is by James Patterson and our very own Dolly Parton. There is quite a wait list, but we do have yeah. four books within the system and they're circulating pretty quickly. So hopefully if you get your name on there, you can get one soon. And if not, we've got plenty of other things to read. Other <laughs> 
fiction mystery thrillers. <laughs> And hopefully much more, which leads us into a little bit lighter of a topic, I guess you could say. So I actually spoke with Jessica, our children's librarian, and we also spoke with Lisa, our teen librarian. Um, always stop by and see them if you ever have the time. And two of our newer and most exciting books that Jessica let us know about mm -hmm. was Best Day Ever by Marilyn Singer and Sing With Me, The Story of Selena by D Diana Lopez, which I actually have behind us, even though you podcast people can't see it. <laughs> they also recently made a movie about Selena, didn't they? Mm -hmm, they did. Is it like an anniversary of something of some sort, I think? I'm not sure. I know she passed away yeah, way, was, way, way too, too young. young. Um, but yeah, we've we've got that. We might probably have the movie. Mm -hmm. We should probably check later. <laughs> but anyway, um, so where were we? Please. No. Two. Oh. All right. Uh, we also have books from our teen center. So uh, if you're like us and like to read young adult or if you're a kid, you like to read teen, you're <laughs> at the right place. And I'm wondering why you're listening to our podcast. But thank you. Um, anyway, so our most circulating one is My Hero Academia Team Up Missions Volume 2, which we don't have on display behind us because guess what? It is checked out because it's so popular. Um, so that spins off from a well-known, very popular My Hero Academia series. It's an anime. So for you who are not familiar with that, think of it like Japanese comic books. Um, like Superman, actually. It's kind of, it's interesting, especially with this very, uh, the series. It's written by uh, Kohei Hirokoshi, who really loved, like, Spider-Man and American comics. So he did his own ode to it. So it's these children in a world with superpowers and learning to become superheroes in school. So it's kind of funny <laughs> to see how that we've influenced them and they've shot something back back at us. But My Hero Academia, it's at 30 volumes currently, and I think we almost have them all. But it's got so much love that it has three different spinoff series, which is the Team Up Missions, which unlike the manga, which is done in panels of art, it's written like a novel. But uh, My Hero Smash, which is basically a, a comedic run of it, it doesn't take itself too seriously, it's bloopers. Um, and then you've got My Hero Vigilantes. So the heroes are accepted by the government mm -hmm. and to do their job, and they get paid for that. But then you've got people whose uh, quirks or superpowers aren't so good, but they still want to be heroes and do good in their society. So they become vigilantes. So it follows a story of three or four vigilantes. They're very good. Um, and we have them all in our life. No, I don't think we have vigilantes, but we will be getting vigilantes if I have anything <laughs> to do with it. So, uh, but yeah, if you like if you like reading books, we have several book clubs. Yes, we do. We have them at all three locations, actually. And I'll let you know a couple of the KFL ones. Our first that we're going to talk about is the Fireside Book Club. They are currently reading The House We Grew Up In by Lisa Jewell, and they are going to meet on May 13th at 10. And then our personal favorite, The Cookbook book club mm. is where you choose a cookbook and share a dish prepared from the book at the monthly meeting which this month i am so excited is mexican fiesta and they're meeting may 4th at 10 there might be some like fights breaking out in the staff room for their food yes. i don't <laughs> doubt it especially if there's queso involved mm. i'm gonna throw some hands <laughs> i agree and another kfl book club that is actually not run by our staff it is run by a lovely patron named carl parsons is our Classics Book Club. They are celebrating 10 years of meeting, and I think that is just amazing. And they meet on April 28th at 6, and are currently reading The Known World by Edward P. Jones. So our branch isn't the only one that has some. So we've got Seymour, who has my personal favorite, Bring Your Own Book Club. It's very hard to get everybody on the same page with their busy schedules, like literally on the same page of the same book at the same time. <laughs> so uh, it's nice to have just a book you're reading and want to share with your friends and be like, look how good this book is to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like us right here, yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, like right now or yeah, circulation or, you know. <laughs> and then they also have the Homeschool Reading Book Club. Um, right now they're reading Beatrice Prophecy by Kate DiCamillo. I got her name right. Yes. <laughs> um, they meet on May 12th uh, from 10 to 10.30 to 11.30. And I don't remember if I said, but uh, the Bring Your Own Book Club meets May 5th at 6 o'clock. Um, and then last but certainly not least, we have Kodak, Kodak Beyond the Cover Adult Book Club. And then they read any book chosen by a speci specific, specific specified, specified author of the <laughs> month. Um, it's April 28th at 4, and this month it's Kristen Hanna. 
who does historical romance. I think she just had like – she's the one who came up with the four wins. Mm-hmm. And the Nightingale, I believe. Yeah. Which, which is very, very popular. Mm-hmm. So – uh, so are we finally getting to movies? Because I am so excited. <laughs> you like movies and you work in a library? I love movies. I mean, don't get me wrong. Books will always have my heart mm-hmm. first. But I mean, I'm, I'm a Netflix lover. I mean, I just have my comfort movies that I just need sometimes. Well, boy, do we have your comfort movies <laughs> physically if for some reason you don't have access to Netflix, which True. is possible. Um, we've got, let's see here. We've got movies we've got series we've got documentaries we've mm-hmm. even got audiobooks on cd so uh but for now our popular one circulating this past couple months is the boss baby family business which is a comedy family movie um the short synopsis is the templeton brothers have become adults and drifted away from each other but a new boss baby with cutting edge approach is about to bring them together again and inspire a new family business <laughs> Boy, do I hope it's not the mafia. It <laughs> sounds like it. Um, and then we've also got Old, which is a horror thriller. I saw that one in theaters. That's by M. Night Shyamalan, if no one knows. And it's basically these people get trapped on this beach and they age their whole lives in like a day. And there's a, it's based off of a graphic novel called Sandcastles. And uh, I haven't read that, but I, I know the synopsis of it and the plot. And they they vary. They, uh, the ending obviously varies. But I think the movie did a good job explaining the weird phenomenon in a way that made sense for the movie and wrapped yeah. it up where you didn't feel like, oh, what just happened? But then you still leave the theater feeling like, I need to take a shower and not watch that ever again. I'm glad <laughs> I watched it once, but I am not checking that out at the library. <laughs> uh, so we also have You Again, which is a romance comedy. We have Cruella for all you Disney fans out there. Mm-hmm. Those, uh, those new live actions have been making a resurgence. And it's nice to have like a villain's point of view. I heard yeah. uh, it really explains why she does not like dogs. Um, and then we got Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, which is adventure fantasy. So if – hopefully it's still checked in with it being close to Easter. Mm-hmm. Maybe if it's not checked – or if it's checked out, we might have Rise of the Guardians or something, which is another Easter film to watch yes. with your family on those <laughs> days off when we're closed. So uh, come in soon. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you notice that there's, a, there's kind of a trend? So there's comedies for movies and thrillers for books. What do you think – what do you think about that? Honestly, I think it's kind of hard to find a good comedic book. Am I right? I mean, I don't really read that much adult fiction anyways. Obviously, children's books are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But adult fiction, I think they kind of expect you to grow up and it's more romance or intensity and you don't really get that just pure comedic relief. Yeah, and I guess you can just turn on Netflix if you want a (laughs) comedy show. True. Very true. Or check out a comedy movie. So something with more gravity, <laughs> kind of. April is National Poetry Month, so uh, I'm not a huge poetry person, but I, I, I do like some, you know, Robert Frost. And, <laughs> um, but we've I've pulled a couple title names from our system. We've got Good Morning, Good Night, little pep talks for me and you from Lynn Manuel Miranda. You might know him from Hamilton, or you might know him from Moana, <laughs> or, or a million in, other things, or, uh, or in Canto. <laughs> So yeah, he is he's been big lately. Uh I'm gonna read just a small little snippet of his poems uh from his book. They started out as tweets, funnily enough. He'd he'd say like good morning, tweet something, and when he went to bed, he'd say good night and he'd tweet something, and then everybody's like, You should make a book, and he goes, Yeah, yeah, I should make a book, and then he got it illustrated. So uh without further ado, <clears throat> Good morning. Get out of your own head for a sec. Do something good f- today for someone else. They'll appreciate it. And so will your head. Good night. Climb back into your own head for a sec. Take stock of what you got and what you need. You'll appreciate it. And so will your head. So, yeah. Like I said, short, sweet. And they all kind of go along that, like, mm-hmm. wholesome feeling. Yeah. Um, we also have A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein, if you like a nice classic. Uh, and then you've got Complete Poetry by Maya Angelou. And I will not dislike i will not dishonor her books by reading them (laughs) myself but they're they're amazing poems uh she's a very big favorite of other people so Mm -hmm. and since you did share your favorite i am gonna share a little bit of mine so one of my all-time favorite poets and authors is william b yates and we just so happen to have his book here on our third floor section and one of my all-time favorite poems by him is he wishes for the cloths of heaven which i'd like to read for you guys Had I the heavens embroidered cloths, and wrought with golden and silver light, the blue and the dim and the dark cloths of night and light and the half-light, 
I would spread the cloths under your feet, but I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly, because you tread on my dreams. And that, you guys, is how she's upstaged me. She goes, <laughs> let me whip out a classic while you read some tweets that were written out. Like, thanks. <laughs> I mean, I have to show off my English major vibes, right? I guess it's going to be an English <laughs> history major war. I mean, we can make it one. We can make it a <laughs> podcast episode idea. Write that down. Um, so just for a fun little FYI, if for some reason we've mentioned any of these books or mm -hmm. movies or poetry that you're very <laughs> much interested in, you could let us know. Um, so option one, if we don't have the desired material for some reason, which it happens. Uh, you can get it inter interlibrary loans, which is basically where they ask another library if they have it. And they'll be like, yeah, here, sure, borrow it for like a month. And so um, we can't guarantee that another library will loan it, and but they might. And if they do, it could take a couple, it could take up to a couple weeks sometimes mm -hmm. for books to get to us. But it's a nice way to, to get a book and it saves you money. And yeah, so um, there's other ways to get books too. Like uh, if they're brand new, interlibrary loan doesn't do it. So if they're about six months mm -hmm. or newer, where, where would we get that, Lana? Well, one thing we actually have here, um, you can come to any staff member in the library and we all have access to the same patron request list. So that's something, one book that we have already talked about a little bit, Rose Run. Uh, run, Rose Run. Run, Rose Run. That's what it is. Dolly Parton and James Patterson. Mm -hmm. um, we had about 10 different patrons put that on our request list. So if you give us our the title of the book, your name, your library card number, we will put that on the request list. We don't have a guarantee that you'll get it and get it quick, but it's always a possibility. So if for some reason you can't make it into the library or you have a grudge against physical books because they fell on your grandma and put her in an early grave, you never know. <laughs> uh, you can use an app called Libby. Um, you can access it with any of uh, library... Well, I wouldn't say any library card. You can access it with our library card for sure. Um, they've got magazines, ebooks, and audiobooks. So, again, if you don't like our wonderful poetry reading, you might be able to find something on there for you to like to read. Um, so, we're hoping to do a mini episode about that because it's quite an interesting system. Um, but for the meantime, it's you can check out a book for about about two weeks or longer. It's, it's kind of nice that way. And then um, if they're brand new books, you might not be able to get them as soon as like interlibrary loan or even just from us but mm -hmm. sometimes they have a skip the line feature which is pretty <laughs> neat but you know in the meantime you can always pester us librarians on how to use it or put us on the request list or we can send you up to reference to do a uh interlibrary loan in the meantime yeah so uh oh that doesn't oh we have april we, we're still in april yes we so. are still in april which means that it is money smart week coming up soon that's actually beginning april 9th and ending on april 16th and it's the 20th anniversary of Money Smart Week, which I'm not going to lie. I didn't really know much about until I started working here. And Money Smart Week is a free financial education program. And our libraries love to take part and show you guys different ways you guys can save money or budget. Um, so, Sam, why don't you tell us some of the different ways that we can help you guys save money? Because what is a better place to save money than at your library? We yes. got you, fam. <laughs> So you don't need to buy books, movies, audiobooks, or even video games. We've even got a new collection of video games. Now, some of these things you got to be here for a little while for, just so we know we can trust you. But we have so many things to offer you. We have an instant pot. We have tools to garden with. We have mm -hmm. seeds. You don't even bring those seeds back. I mean, <laughs> bring us the food, of course. But like all those things that could cost you hundreds of dollars, we have it for free. As long as you're yes. in good standing, you can come and get it from us. You you will need to go to Negafax. FedEx is like, hey, $15. No, come to us. We can do it for like 10 cents a page. Same for copies. As long as it's black and white, 10 cents a page, 20 cents for cover colored. Um, if you're printing out a resume, we do 10 free. If you're a kid and you got homework, we can do 10 free pages of your homework. So mm -hmm. it's we're, re we're a really amazing resource except if you, you know, want to go buy books anyway because you read a really good book in the library and you're like, I need to own this in every single language special edition. <laughs> but, you know, and, and we can help you do that too because we have yeah. the internet. <laughs> so, I mean, you can use it free, you know, yeah. put in your library card or your name and just sit down on our computers. But, you know, we're humans. So we like to sleep sometimes. So we do have to close and be closed a couple days, you know, or yeah. what, nine, nine to eight most days, but, you know. <laughs> so if for some reason you can't, come in or we can't or we don't have the hours for you 
you can get on our hotspot list. So if you don't know yes. what a hotspot is, it's like you take it home and it gives you internet. Um, is the simplest way to put it. And we checked those out for about two weeks, but like your internet bill can get really expensive. I think mine's like 80 bucks or something. Oh, just, it just keeps going up. And just up. for internet. So uh, if you if you have social anxiety and don't want to call your uh, internet provider like every couple of months <laughs> and be like, hey, can I get a lower rate? We got hotspots for you or, you know, free internet in the building. So that's our way to help you kind mm-hmm. of do some money saving here. And of course, we've got yeah. our table set up with uh, other information. And whatnot. Yeah. Which speaking of tables and displays, mm-hmm. all of our branches have displays out for Money Smart Week that is coming up. And we did want to highlight Kodak. Um, they are actually doing a coupon swap, which I think is a perfect idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many times do you get coupons that you just like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. So you can always go to Kodak, check out the coupon swap box mm-hmm. and Take one, give one. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to look up some more on Money Smart Week or ask our librarians here. And that again is moneysmartweek.org. And it's yes. 100% virtual f- webinar. So if for some reason we don't have enough information for you or you just want to come in, you can watch it at home. <laughs> um, so I think that about wraps it up for our first inaugural episode. Hopefully we didn't scare you away. And um Hopefully it wasn't a too bad of a show for you. And if it was, keep in mind, practice makes perfect. The more we do this for you, the better we'll get. So really, help us help you help us. Exactly. Yeah. And speaking of helping us with this podcast, we did want to just give a little shout out to Ben, our tech guy and business center coordinator. And we just wanted to tell you all thank you so, so much for tuning in. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, just thank you guys, the viewers. And again, thanks, Ben. We're going to clap. Um, if you can't see us, we're clapping. <laughs>